Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today, we're gonna to take a look at latency in audio interfaces. Let's get started. So I do a lot of videos here demoing audio interfaces, and a lot of times we'll see a comment that asks the question, what's the latency on that audio interface? And the question is, in 2023, does latency still matter? Now let's explore this whole topic because there's a lot to unpack here. And there can be a lot of confusion about this topic as well. I saw one website where they claimed that the quality of sound that the audio interface captured affected its latency because there were fewer components in certain types of interfaces that maybe sounded different. Couldn't quite wrap my head around that. So let's try and avoid some of that confusion and again, unpack this topic and figure out what latency really means in 2023. Now, of course, latency is critical to manage because if there are delays in the signal, it's gonna mess up all kinds of things for us, especially in our workflow. Whether you're trying to perform as a musician, use virtual instruments, use plugins, whatever it might be, latency can affect all of that. And we really don't wanna have to think about that when we're creating music or working on a production. You wanna put all that out of your mind and hopefully the interface and your computer is gonna handle all of it for you. One more point, there used to be a big difference between DSP-driven audio interfaces, like those that were used with Pro Tools HD, for example, just one example, and native audio interfaces that didn't use any DSP. But these days, with the speed of current computers, with the software that we're using, the interfaces we're using, there's really not that much difference. But there are still differences, and so we're going to talk about some of that as well. So I'll ask one more time. It's 2023. Does audio interface latency still matter? Let's find out. So before we move on, let's go ahead and define what latency is. That's really what we're talking about here. And literally, latency is a delay between one thing happening and either perceiving or recognizing or another thing happening. And in audio, latency refers to audio or sound entering an analog input on an audio interface, passing through the interface into the computer through any drivers and software, back out of the computer into the audio interface and coming out of an analog output, like a headphone output or a monitor output. So it's a signal entering the interface, going through the entire system and coming back out of the interface. That's what we're talking about when we talk about latency. So why does latency matter? There are a lot of different things that latency can affect when we're working with audio and creating music, but there are two primary things we're gonna look at today, and that's tracking and overdubbing. Now, if you have delays in the signal, the time it takes for that analog input to go through the system and come back so you can hear it, when you're tracking, this can cause problems because you'll hear things after you've actually performed them, and we're gonna talk more about that later. But for example, if you sing something and there's enough latency, you might actually perceive that as an echo as opposed to just monitoring along directly the way that you'd want to work with things when you're creating a track. Now, the other place this becomes important is when we're overdubbing. When you're monitoring tracks that are already recorded, in your DAW, you're playing them back and you're singing or playing along with them. If there's a delay in there, they're not gonna line up properly. The timing's not gonna be correct, the feel, the rhythm, all that's gonna be off. And so we just can't have that when we're overdubbing. So with latency, there are a number of factors. There certainly is the hard measured latency, but there's also a sensitivity factor to this, if you will. And that's that all of us perceive the importance of these delays differently. So for some people, they may pick up on latency just immediately, and for others, it may not matter as much. And there's also a context aspect to this as well. I see many sources that say 12 to 15 milliseconds of latency is noticeable, and 20 to 30 milliseconds of latency is actually perceivable as a separate repeat or an echo that comes in. But to me, those numbers are actually pretty high. For many of us, seven milliseconds of latency or even lower, you can perceive that as a sort of feel thing. Like if you're playing a guitar, your pick strikes the string, seven milliseconds can be long enough to where you actually perceive that as a slight lag. It isn't so much audible as it is something you notice in your feel as you're playing or as you're singing. And speaking of singing, this can be one of the most important places where we need to address latency because with vocalists, the sound is actually coming through your head, through the bones in your head to your ears. And then if it's also coming back through speakers or through headphones, that delay is very noticeable because it's instantaneous basically inside your head, but there's that amount of time that it takes for the electrical signal, if you will, to travel back to your ears. And so with vocalists, latency can be very important. In fact, some vocalists will say that they can notice latencies as low as three milliseconds, which is very, very short. And I mentioned headphones and monitors there, and there's a difference there as well. When you have a set of headphones on, the sound is immediately on your ears. There's no time taken for the actual sound to go through the air. With monitors, it does take time for the sound to come through the air. Sound basically travels at one millisecond per foot through the air. And so that tells you if your monitors are three feet away, you're actually three milliseconds away from your monitors. So if you're using monitors versus headphones, that can also impact the perceived amount of latency that you're dealing with. 
An example of this would be with electric guitar. If you're playing guitar through an amplifier, say you're standing up in the studio, you're playing through a combo amplifier that's sitting on the floor, you're four, five, six, ten feet away from the speaker that's in the amplifier. That could be four, five, six, or ten milliseconds of time for the signal to leave the speaker and actually arrive at your ears. Now if you're playing direct, if you're plugged into a modeler, for example, and it's going straight into your audio interface, coming straight through headphones, it's much more instantaneous. So that can change the feel of things as well, and if there's latency in the system, it may be more noticeable. Another example would be drummers who are playing a mic'd up acoustic drum kit. When a drummer hits a snare drum, it's about two and a half feet on average, and so that's about two and a half milliseconds of time between the drum strike and it actually arriving at your ears. Now if we add that in with the latency of the audio interface and so on, all this creates a composite effect that we need to deal with to create a good recording and performing environment. But all this can depend on context. If you have a slow attack on a sound, latency isn't going to be as noticeable. Here's one extreme example. If you're playing pipe organ and you push down on a foot pedal to create a bass note, it can be a hundred milliseconds before that note is actually audible in the room. So obviously, three milliseconds of latency isn't going to be a big deal at that point. So there's some context involved in all of this as well. So let's talk a little bit about where latency comes from. If we look at the audio interface itself, the actual hardware I'm talking about now, is there latency there? The answer is yes, but it's so small that it's really not even a factor. It's really negligible. It takes anywhere from a half a millisecond to around a millisecond for the analog to digital converter to change the analog signal into digital. And when we're coming back, it can take about a millisecond for the digital to analog converter to get things back into the analog domain. So there's 1.5 to 2 milliseconds right there just with the hardware and the audio interface. But again, that's so small that it's actually negligible to what we're talking about here. There can be some other things in the interface that might slow things down a little bit as well, but really the hardware itself is not contributing much, if anything at all, to the latency that we're perceiving. Interestingly, the connection format can also have an impact on what we're doing here. By that I mean USB or Thunderbolt these days. USB actually has a couple of buffers on the input and the output that can slow things down by, again, a negligible amount. Thunderbolt, on the other hand, uses DMA or direct memory access to send the data directly through without involving the CPU. So that's actually a faster format. But again, we're talking pretty minimal differences there. You can certainly do tons of tracks with very little or no latency using USB as well. Now where latency really comes from is when we start getting into the computer. There are two aspects here. There are the drivers, which are the little pieces of software that interface the audio interface with the computer. And then there's the actual DAW software itself and any plugins that you're running. Now the driver is a huge contributing factor here. With Windows and with Mac, they have built in, I guess you'd say, drivers, core audio in the case of Mac and so on. And those work very well. Especially core audio is pretty well optimized for getting great response and low latency out of things. But many manufacturers, if not most of them, actually create their own drivers for both Mac and Windows, and these can be optimized to give you even better performance. So you definitely want to look at which driver is going to give you the best possible performance with latency with whatever audio interface and whatever platform you're using. Latency can also come into play if you're trying to monitor through or record through plugins on the way into the computer. For example, if you're trying to record through a modeled guitar plugin, or if you want to add comfort reverb, that'd be a pretty common uh, application to be to add comfort reverb or comfort delay for a vocalist who's tracking. In that case, you want to try and place those effects on an aux send rather than directly inserted on a track so that they're not slowing down or adding latency to the direct signal that you're monitoring. So let's talk about ways that you can manage latency. There are a couple different factors that we need to look at. First of all, those drivers. You want to choose the driver that's going to be optimized for the best performance. For example, Core Audio on Mac works great with many audio interfaces, but there may be a proprietary driver from the manufacturer that gives you even better performance, so be sure you investigate that. Another factor can be buffer settings. Now, the lower the buffer setting, the lower the latency is going to be, but lower buffer settings put a heavier load on the computer, so it's a balancing act. You want to run those buffers as low as you possibly can without making the system unstable and without having audio problems like clicks and pops that can result when you push the CPU too hard. So manage those buffer settings as low as possible while still maintaining proper performance. One that we often don't think about is sample rate. Higher sample rates actually have lower latency than lower sample rates. So for example, a 96 kilohertz sample rate has half the latency of a 48 kilohertz sample rate. So even if you're not recording at high sample rates for audio reasons, you might want to consider using a higher rate for lower latency reasons. Now again, this can put a little more load on your computer, and it also results in larger files, but it can be worth it if it reduces those latency issues. 
But today, virtually every audio interface has either some sort of built-in or other system that allows it to manage or eliminate latency as a concern for us. And there are two effective ways that they do this. The first of these is called direct monitoring. I have a couple audio interfaces here that use this system. For example, this is the Neve 88M audio interface. Over here, we have a knob that allows you to basically route the incoming signal directly to headphone or monitor outputs without going through the computer, without going through any of the circuitry inside the audio interface, actually. Now, when you do this, you've eliminated latency because the input is going straight to the output. This basically gives you zero latency, or as close as you can get to zero latency. I guess we can refer to that as ultra-low latency, if you will, but direct monitoring is a great term for it. In this case, we can listen to the DAW, we can listen to the direct signal, or we can listen to a mix of those. I've got another example here. This is the Black Lion Audio Revolution 2x2. It also has direct monitoring, where the inputs can be routed directly to your headphones or your monitor outputs, which eliminates any concern with latency. Now, downside to direct monitoring is if you want to monitor or record through plugins, you're not going to hear that in the direct monitoring path. In most cases, you can get around that either by using an aux send or by just sending the signal in the way that you want to hear it. But uh, that is one limitation with direct monitoring. It works very well unless you need to monitor through plugins. Now, our second solution is usually referred to as some kind of ultra low latency or low latency solution. And this usually involves having a built in digital mixer inside the audio interface itself. And that digital mixer is then controlled by an app that runs inside your computer. So all the mixing and everything is on board the actual interface. And this eliminates that path through the computer, through the drivers, through the software, and back out. Gives you a very, very low latency result. A couple of examples. I've got a Lewitt Connect 6 here. This has a built-in digital mixer and an app that corresponds with that that allows you to get basically latency-free operation. Another example the new SSL 12 audio interface. Again, we've got a mixer app that runs in your computer and that controls an onboard digital mixer inside the interface itself. Now, in some cases, not only does this allow for low or ultra low latency monitoring, but there are also built-in effects in some of these digital mixers inside some interfaces. So you could blend in comfort reverb or delay along with your vocal or whatever track you're recording with no latency hit at all because it's all handled inside the interface itself. Either of these methods, whether direct monitoring or some sort of ultra low latency monitoring feature built into the audio interface, pretty much have taken care of any latency concern for most of us. There are still some situations, again, monitoring through plugins can be an issue, having to record tons of tracks simultaneously can be an issue, but for most of us, either direct monitoring or ultra low latency monitoring via a digital mixer inside the interface takes care of the latency issue for us. So it's 2023, to answer our original question, does latency still matter? In most cases, it's really not an issue for us. The audio interface manufacturers have taken care of things with direct monitoring and with ultra low latency features that really solve the problem for us. But as you're thinking about this, keep three things in mind. When you're recording, keep those buffer settings optimized. Lower the buffer, the lower latency you're gonna have to deal with. Second, look at your sample rate. A higher sample rate gives you lower latency. And third, be sure you're using an optimized driver. Sometimes the proprietary drivers for manufacturers will perform better than the drivers that are built into the operating system for your computer platform. So by keeping an eye on those three factors and also taking advantage of the monitoring possibilities built into your audio interface, whether direct monitoring or an ultra low latency monitoring feature, you can pretty much eliminate latency as a consideration for most of the things that you're going to be doing. There are exceptions, of course, and we need to be aware of latency. But these days, with modern audio interfaces and modern computer platforms, we're in pretty good shape regarding latency. I hope you found this closer look at audio interface latency useful. If you have questions, contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit Sweetwater.com. We've got tons of information up there on all sorts of topics related to recording. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.